Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Name. It's me, Ella, and today is episode number 49. Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. Um, ugh, my eyelashes are sticking together. That was random. Anyways, uh, you may hear a noise in the background. It's really warm today, so I have a fan going. I'm sorry if that's annoying, but I will try to um, up the vocal part of this. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too bad. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and hop in because it's the weekend and Jesse and Devin are in the living room and I like spending time with them. As you guys know, that's also why this is late. I was supposed to put this out yesterday, but I never had a chance to film it. We were busy all day yesterday. So today is Sunday, July 13th, 14th, 15th, I think. I just heard Jesse hollering for me. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start off. I've only got one finished object this week, but I've got four active whips and two of them are new from last week but my finished object is my oops, I just heard a noise back there my first my only finished object is um, my Sam um, flag decoration what is it called it's called snappy Sam flag decoration by Heidi Yates it is a paid for pattern I think I got it when she had a really good sale going on uh, which is almost always but it is it's like a a flag that you hang on your it's supposed to be a garden flag but I don't have a yard because I live in an apartment so I use them just in our house as decoration for holidays you may have seen them if you're you've seen older videos this is a patriotic themed one for the United States of America and I made this for um, our county fair because there's a category in it for patriotic decoration that's not a, fl a, um, a reef because I already have a reef off of also but anyways here it is I didn't put the USA lettering on here because I just didn't think it needed it. That'd be kind of like a USA overkill. <laughs> um, I do still need to felt the back of it because I do like all my flags. I like to hot glue felt on the back just to make them sturdier. And I do need to, this will fold over and a dowel will go through it so I can hang it. I do have to do that, but the crochet part is done. I think it's super cute. Kind of go close. I gave him blue eyes. I thought he'd look good with blue eyes. And the little eagle is <laughs> so cute. The pattern also, this is kind of flat, but you can make it a stuffy also. Yeah, I think it turned out good. It's a little curly because I haven't put the felt on the back of it yet. But I will. But yeah, that's Heidi Yates pattern. If you've watched me for a while, you know that I love Heidi Yates patterns. And that is one of them. <laughs> Alright, that's all my finished objects. Now I do have some whips. Uh, I got, I'll just start with this first bag. I'm not really sure what's in this bag. Let's see. Alright, this is a new whip in my one of my Christmas bags that I made last year. And this is, if you play Pokemon Go, um, it's a hat that's on Pokemon Go. It's actually one of the Pokemon, like on your head. It's a Magikarp. It's a fish. Uh, if you don't play Pokemon Go, it's just a fish hat. Uh, I have a pattern that I bought years ago for the same hat, but I just don't like that pattern. Um... I don't know, just the construction of it's weirder. So this is a free pattern, and it's called Carpe Diem Useless Goldfish Monster Hat by a name I can't pronounce, but it'll be linked below. And it's a free PDF pattern. I've only got this much of it done. You start at the brim, which is its lips, <laughs> and then you start, this is part of its body, it's orange color. And I already tried it on. It'll be like that, except this will be in the back, hopefully. <laughs> and the fish will be hanging down. <laughs> I will pop up a picture right here of what it's gonna look like. Yeah, and I'm using, oh, I forgot to say the colors for that. I'll go back to it in a second. For this, I'm using Red Heart Super Saver Light Raspberry, and this is Red Heart Super Saver Pumpkin, I think. No, Carrot. And um, there's also yellow or gold color and white that I'll be using, and it'll be Red Heart Super Saver White and Gold. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I got so far. This is kind of my in-between project. This is what I do like when Jesse's being rambunctious or something and I can just do like solid rounds. That's what I work on. But yeah, it's living in my Christmas bag that I made. Box to bottom. Back, there. Uh, back to the same one guys because I forgot to say the colors. It's all Red Heart Super Saver also. It's Red Heart Super Saver Hot Red, White, Cafe Latte, Bright Yellow, Blue, and this is, I think, Petal Pink. Yeah, I believe that's Petal Pink. And this right here, his skin is, I love this yarn, Light Peach. I almost always use Red Heart Super Saver for stuff like that. And I just use that peach color because um, 
it's the only skin color, Caucasian skin color that I have that I, I like for stuff like that. All right, my next whip is another new one, <laughs> and it is a crochet along that's going on. It started last week, I think, and Saturday, this Saturday, yesterday was the first day of part two. I finished part one, but I haven't started for part two yet. <laughs> it is a blanket, and it is called the Halloween Granny Square Blanket by Maria's Blue Crown. Let me get my pieces out. Get it all untangled. All right, the first week was to make four gray squares. So I have four of these ones. They're just like a granny square. So I do have four of those. And then four purple ones. This is um, Mainstay's light heather gray, or medium heather gray. And this is all of this yarn amethyst. And I got three more of those. And then the appliques for last week was little ghosts. I haven't sold them on yet, so I guess I'm not done with part one, but these are the little ghosts. <laughs> There's four of these. I do have to cut the back of the safety eyes off. And I do plan after I finish this blanket and sew it all together and all that, I'm going to back it with fleece, I think, just so it's um, warmer and these little bags don't poke through so bad. I do plan on trimming them down but they'll still be a little pokey so uh, I think backing the whole blanket with fleece or felt or whatever it's called will um, make it softer and the little ghosts are just red heart super saver white this week I have to make four more gray squares four more purple squares and little witch appliques and um, it goes on through it's in a nine it's a nine week cow I think it goes through August, like the end of August. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it ends the first week of September. Whatever eight weeks from now is. <laughs> but yeah, that's a fun pattern. It's free on her blog, but she does have it listed on Ravelry as a paid for PDF and it's all in one area. But you can get it for free on the blog. And it'll be linked below. Let's see here. My next whip. I've been working on this one a lot during crochet and chat videos that are live. But I didn't work on it this week. I did do two um, rows on my first live video. But this second live video that I did the other day, I didn't. But it's my corner to corner. So there's where it was last time I saw it. And then I did add two rows. So it's slowly coming along. And it'll be done eventually. Let me go ahead and do the progress keeper so I don't forget. Um... Ooh. This is another project that I just work on, like in the car or when we go to like Devin's dad's house or something. Somewhere where I don't really want to take a pattern with me to concentrate on. I just want something that I can just do without even thinking about it, mindless or whatever. So that's that. It is in the decrease, so I am on the the way home, the home front or whatever that saying is. Um, and I'm not sure about the border yet. I'll worry about that when I finish it, but it's living in my skeleton bag. Alright, that's all my whips except the main one, the big one. <laughs> my last whip is uh, my Mandala Madness blanket. Which I did finish part 9. I can't remember if I did in the last video. I did post it on the Facebook group and I updated my Ravelry um, project page for it. And I am starting on I'm on, I think, the fourth row of the tenth round because another row on it, I'll show you which one, took forever. It literally took me crocheting on it multiple hours for three days. I just finished it this morning, actually. So I want to get up and show you the whole thing. Try to. It's awful big. It's so big. It's so big and it's only half done. <laughs> it's gonna be a big blanket, but I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, like I said, I finished round our part nine and I am working on part ten. Part ten started right here where the yellow starts. And I think I did um two rolls of yellow and then I had to do this round with yellow and green held together. And that's why it took so long because I was working for some yellow stitches and then I was having to do these green ones. That part took 
three days of working on it for multiple hours each day. Seriously, it took, I'm going to say like 10 hours to, to do that one row. Ridiculous amount of time to do that one row. But now I'm working on this top row up here, and it's just double crochets pretty much. There's a few single crochets thrown in there, but it's mostly double crochets. And I think after this top yellow one, I have one more round, and then I'll be done with part 10, I think. One or two. So we actually like, where am I at? Right here. Make sure I don't pull out any stitches. Hold on, I'm tangled in it. So here's where I am. My right here's where it was. <laughs> that was a pain in the butt row. If you if you do this blanket, you need to watch out for part eight because section eight has this blue that's a pain in the butt. And then section 10 has this up here that's a pain in the butt. Very annoying rounds. I hope there's not many more like that. Very time consuming rounds. Oh, such a big blanket. I do look so forward to finishing that though because it's so pretty already. I can't imagine what it's going to look like when it's done. I do need to stop and weave in the ends because I've not w woven in any ends in like a few rounds. So there's quite a few um, left. But that is the Mandala Madness by Helen Shrimpton. It is free. It was originally posted as a crochet along. So when you go to the website that I'll link below, it'll be separated still in the weeks. But all the links are there on that first page. And I actually like that because I'm doing it one... Uh, part at a time and it helps break it down. So it's not so overwhelming um, I really enjoy that that it's broken up like that. Let's see. That's everything, right? Yes, I do have another whip that I will be starting soon as in like tonight or tomorrow. So you will see Some of it next week. Well, I have to ask the designer because it is a test crochet she has showed hers so far so i'm sure she'll won't mind me showing my, uh, mine once i get started but it is from abby at blue hearts uh crafts she designed a shawl based off of titanic she loves the movie and the history of titanic so she designed it based off of the heart of the ocean and i actually gave helped her name it the dawson shawl which is cool i feel special about that <laughs> but um it's a it's like a wrap I think it's more like a wrap than a shawl but uh, and it's got heart um, not Maltese but like what's it called fillet 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 I can't remember how to pronounce it but it's like holes that make the shape <laughs> of hearts so it's it's gonna be really pretty she's making hers with mandala spirit I think the blue and gray one I'm gonna be making mine I think out of genie because I have two cakes of genie left and I just want to try to use them up and what's cool is she's starting a crochet along on August the 1st that is vintage themed items so if she has her pattern released by then I don't know if she will but you can use that as an entry because her vintage is before the year 2000 anything that's you know 1999 and beyond is considered a vintage and it doesn't have to be patterns that old it just has to be patterns themed that old and um, so it's cool that you could enter that and also you could also double dip and in enter it into mine and moles uh, cakewalk cowl if you use caked yarns to make it so that's really cool yeah I did write that down because I did want to mention her crochet along starting on August 1st she has I'll link her um, her what am I talking about? Her YouTube channel down below, but I'll also link her Facebook group down below because that's where the um, cow will be taking place. And so, if you're interested in that, hop over and join her Facebook group, and you can join in on the cow when it comes in August, which is really close because it's already the middle of July. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I think so. <laughs> I have a few more things that I wanted to mention real quick, and then I'll probably go ahead and hop off here because, like I said, this is gonna be kind of short because they're home, and I want to go play with them. Plus I got a lot of crocheting and sewing to catch up on because I was supposed to sew a lot yesterday and we ended up being gone all day playing playing Pokemon. But um, the only things I want to mention is the Cakewalk Cow still going strong. If you're interested in joining that you can go to my Facebook group or Moe's Ravelry group which will both be linked below. Um, you basically can make any pattern you want out of caked yarns and it can be store-bought caked yarns or yarns that you caked yourself. It's basically a stash buster. 
um, you can enter it in our groups and at August 14th is when it ends and then we will be picking winners. We each will have winners. I'm going to pick four winners. I'm going to have two winners for patterns and two winners for physical items which will probably be um, project bag and some yarn or something like that. Uh, another thing that I want to announce, I've already talked about it on the Facebook group and in one of my live videos, but I'll talk about it here too in case people don't do the Facebook group or the live videos, but um, is an ornament swap that I'm wanting to start this year. Uh, I'm going to open signups on September 1st, and I'm going to have a little thing that you got to fill out, and you're going to have one partner each. You can choose to be domestic to you or international, it depends on you know if you want to pay shipping and stuff. Um, and basically it's just any uh, winter holiday, so it could be Christmas, uh, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, winter solstice, any winter holiday that you participate in, you make an ornament or a decoration or a toy or you know whatever is related to your religion, or not your religion, but your holiday, or your partner's holiday, <laughs> and you swap with them. So. Um, like if it's Christmas, you know, you make Christmas ornaments for your Christmas celebrating partner. But if if your partner is celebrates Hanukkah or something, you would make something Hanukkah themed or whatever, or just winter themed, you know. Um, and the only requirements is you must send an ornament or whatever for their holiday, and a card or a note. And then you can also send gifts and things if you want, but they're not required and they they shouldn't be expected. So if you send your partner fifty dollars worth of gifts you shouldn't expect to get that much back because the only requirements is an ornament and a card and if you send anything extra that's a hundred percent on you and that's your choice but you shouldn't expect to get gifts and stuff you know i just don't want people to get mad if they spend a lot of money on their partner and then don't get anything but an ornament and a card but uh, i just thought it would be fun to have ornaments and stuff from different people I have, I participated in one from Aaron at Give Me Yarn 418 a few years ago, I think it was two Christmases ago, and I got a Christmas ornament from, no it was last Christmas, I think, yeah, I got an ornament from, no it was two Christmases ago, because it was before we lived here, okay, anyways, I got an ornament from the UK and it was really cool, so last year when I put it on the tree, it was just, you know, I remembered that and I, I knew that it was from a totally different country, miles and miles and miles away from me, but was sent to me as gift, it's neat, so it'd be neat to do that on a bigger scale and maybe keep doing it every year. Um, I just thought that'd be neat. I guess it depends how many people sign up. They, you could possibly have multiple partners if you're interested in having multiple partners. I might put that on the questionnaire. And um, then you could potentially get more than one ornament. Oh, I'm, I'm still working on the details, but it'll be, all the information will be set in stone September 1st. It'll be announced on the Facebook group and on my Ravelry group, because I'm going to try to boost that up a little bit. Because I know a lot of people don't do Facebook, but a lot of people also don't do Ravelry. So I'm going to do it on both platforms so that everybody gets covered. <laughs> and um, the, the sign-ups will be September 1st through the 15th. And after the 15th, I will take a week or so to assign partners and get it all straightened out. And then you can immediately, I'll send everybody their partner's information and you can immediately start making your stuff. That way you have, let's see, you have all of October, all of November to make your gifts and, um, or acquire them if you're wanting to buy stuff or whatever. And then I think I'm going to make the shipping date needs to be by December 1st, especially if it's international because you want to make sure they get it before Christmas or whatever holiday they celebrate. Um, yeah, I, I hope it goes smooth. Uh, I guess I'll make kind of a rule like Aaron did. If you sign up for it, but then you don't end up participating in it, or if you get a gift and you don't send the other person theirs, uh, I'll have to block you from that from next year if we do it next year. Because it's not fair to take someone else's item and not give someone else their item, you know? So you gotta be fair about it. You gotta be nice about it. And yeah, I think that's about everything about the ornament swap for now. <laughs> I will definitely update information as I make up more rules and stuff for it. The last thing I have to mention is the pattern credit giveaway that I'm having. Uh, this this month, July's knit crate, I decided to keep it because it's beautiful. And I can't wait to make something with it. I think I'm going to make the yoga socks. But um, And instead of giving away the yarn, I'm giving away $10 worth of Ravelry patterns. Uh, of whoever wins choice up to ten dollars it can be as many patterns as you can squeeze out of ten dollars um, so the link to that will be below and I'll link it up here too if I can remember um, 
So basically it's going until the end of July and then August 1st I will draw the winner and uh, that person can go and pick out all the patterns they want and I'll gift them to them. And you know, there's no rush. I'll give you time. I don't mind at all waiting uh, for you to decide because I know it's hard to kind of pick which patterns you want. <laughs> but I thought that'd be a neat giveaway and it'd be easier than having to ship stuff. So pattern giveaways will probably happen a lot in the future. That's why I decided to give away patterns on the Facebook group for hitting milestones and on the end of the cakewalk cow, I'm going to give away two patterns to uh, two winners. That way I can have four winners and ship two and send two electronically. <laughs> but yeah, that is everything I have to talk about today. Um, I kind of, nope, it's not. I lied. I do have one more thing to show. And it's just my bags. I wanted to show a little bit of them. This one here is currently in the shop if you're interested. And it is a DC comic women themed. It's like Batman, Batwoman, <laughs> Wonder Woman, and Superwoman. I just wanted to like show you guys the general size. This is usually the typical size. They they can vary in height and width a little bit depending on the size of fabric that I make them with. But they're just my drawstring bags. This one does have a box bottom. Some of them I do make just sacks because the material is better in sack form. And this is the inside. This one's just pink. And then this one actually does have a matching zipper pouch. This is a notions pouch that I started making. And it's a zipper and the inside of it is also pink <laughs> um, right now these are separate but I'm thinking in the future I might make on my sets but um, it really just depends on if people are interested in them I do have a bunch of these on the cutting board right now that I've already cut out and I just have to sew together so I will be updating my shop soon with more notions pouches and more project bags this is another project bag that I finished this one isn't on the shop yet I'll be getting it up in the shop this week but this is the Disney princess themed one it's just really pretty pink the inside is a pale pink color it's got Belle and Snow White and Cinderella and someone else who else is on there no that's the three <laughs> that's like the three main ones I just threw the zipper bag but yeah um, I really like the notion pouches that I made Ugh because they are big enough to fit a normal hook and my polymer clay hooks fit in there um, I don't know about the big ergonomic ones because I don't have those I'm sure they will if they're not super long obviously a Tunisian hook wouldn't fit in here um, I have one right here that's a different shape I'll show you in a minute that I use I have all my stuff in and you can put your hooks your scissors your stitch markers you know any kind of little notions even pom pom makers would fit in here anything like that good little zipper pouch and it is interface so it is kind of thicker you know it's like sturdier feeling I did interface it <laughs> but this right here is the first one I made and I love the shape and design of this one but the inside is raw so I think I might go back to the cutting board and try to figure out how to make the same bag but with a finished inside because although I don't mind the raw edges I wouldn't want to sell a raw edge bag to someone um, and I don't have a serger and I'm not good at zigzag stitch but this one is the first one I made I like its size and it has a squared off bottom and it is taller this one is about eight inches long by about five and a half to six inches tall depending on the size of material I used and this one is pink on the inside but see these raw edges that's how the pattern was and I don't mind that personally, but I don't think I'd want to try to sell something like that. I'm not that good at cutting straight. <laughs> That's why I like bags with liners, because you can hide all those things. And in here, I just got, whoops, I just dropped my needle. I have to find that. I got all my hooks, my scissors. I do have a little bag in there that I keep my needles and stitch markers in. This is just handy, and I can just carry this around with me or throw it in a project bag. I've been living in my dapper box with my mandala madness. But yeah, if you're interested, this one is in the shop right now, and it's matching bag. But uh, I will be posting more of these and some more project bags soon, and probably the middle of August, I will be having another sale, probably a 15 or 20 percent off, because the first week of September is our county fair, and I told Devin I'm going to have a sale so that we can have some extra money to uh, let Jesse play a bunch of those little games where you get random stuffed animals but um yeah i really like these bags i've sold one i hope she likes it i have it i she won't get it till tomorrow actually it's kayla she's got a channel too by the way she just started i'll link that below if i can remember but yeah it's a cute little bag 
I think that's everything. I'm going to go ahead and hop off here because I heard Jesse hollering. And uh, he's probably looking for me. But I will see you guys in the next video, which will hopefully be soon. And, um, yeah, I hope you all are having a good weekend. Mine is. And, yeah, that's everything. Bye, guys.